Hi folks, 2022 is going to see a lot of amazing new additions to Fusion 360. And to get us started, we've got a huge update this month and two new extensions we're offering. Let's dive in. I'm excited to announce the launch of product design extension for Fusion 360. Many of you work at the intersection of design, engineering, and manufacturing. We're excited to share that Fusion 360's product design extension is a manufacturing-aware design tool aimed at designers and engineers who need to deploy time-saving tools and explore multiple outcomes in one fail swoop. To kick us off in product design extension, you'll see the automation of BOSS features in plastics design. Just like sheet metal, when you start to design a plastic part, you can set up your design so that downstream you can see design advice to help you manufacture it easier. The automation of bosses and product design extension is one step in an awesome direction. But it's more robust than just that. All the boss features created are tied to parameters through the starting sketch. Also included are dozens of possible iterations of your element and the specifics of that feature like fastening hardware, shoulder types, depths, and more. Also included in the product design extension is what we're calling geometric patterning. We've heard a lot of feedback around having more options when modeling complex surfacing patterns. A lot of designers like to use computational design to apply sweeping changes to a surface texture. But let's be honest, that sometimes feels like you have to have a PhD to do it and can often require cross-product workflows that are cost prohibitive. Geometric pattern can apply multiple patterns via primitive solid bodies or custom design bodies on faces. Made for the designer who wants to iterate quickly through different types of surfacing textures on features like grips or speaker grills or for use in your next headphone design. The geometric patterning tool enables multiple iterations through intelligent automation. Go one step further with custom design starting shapes or use characteristics like positioning, scale, spread, or densities to get exactly what you've envisioned without the headaches. Having options in process automation or declaring your manufacturing intent at the beginning of the design is crucial to success, but so is having ways to prototype the way bodies assemble in the real world quickly. We've created the SnapFit tool to help better with how things snap together in real life. Like the Boss tool, SnapFit is tied to parameters and can be edited and stored as a default once you've landed on your needs. SnapFit has built-in features that save you time on the corresponding features that the hook inserts into with options to groove out where it meets the related body or to use different types of hooks like perpendicular, parallel, and loop. In public preview for extension owners is a new tool we call volumetric latticing. The goal here is to give you options for the inside of whatever body you're creating, to be used in additive workflows or any way you dream up. Volumetric lattice is just another way we're pushing the limits of 3D design. Once you've selected your body, you can choose your cell shape, your options today are Gyroid, Cross, and Schwartz P. Changes to any options will show in your preview. Once you've landed on your chosen lattice cell shape, you can edit the proportion, size, and scale. Another capability is to change the solidity of the cells. This effectively changes the density of the lattice structure and can be uniform or gradient along a path. Applying offsets to faces is as simple as a single click so you don't have to shell and copy bodies. In the Offset tab, simply choose which wall you want to become a solid, change your desired thickness, and you'll be given those solid walled faces. Keep in mind, this is a preview function and will result in ongoing changes until fully released. But for you product design extension owners, get in there, play with it, see what the future has in store. Design Advice is another preview function for Fusion 360's product design extension owners and is tied to manufacturing-aware tools. In a lot of ways, designers shouldn't be required to know every single aspect of how something is made, because no one has that much brain space. But what if you could design something and have a tool that gave you advice on how to improve the manufacturing efficiency of your product? That's what we're aiming for with this preview feature for injection molding. Again, 2022 is going to be a doozy for all things product design, and this is just the start. If you'd like to know more, check out the links in the description below, and stay tuned for deep dives into the BOSS, SnapFit, and Geometric Pattern tools in later videos. One thing I'm super pumped about this month for everyone is Associative Match. Associative Match is an addition to the Match tool in the T-Spline's work environment. Now, you can constrain a T-Spline to parameters to give you parametrically definable organic shapes. I've wanted to share this with y'all for a while, and I think you're going to love it. To use it, in create form, match command, 
a new option is called associative. Once checked, the edges match to any reference geometry become associated with that reference geometry. This means that if at any point you decide to modify the reference geometry in the parametric design environment, albeit a solid surface or a sketch, the T-spline form associated to that geometry will also automatically update and maintain its relationship. Our joint capability has shifted how 3D CAD systems describe kinematics. Most CAD tools use geometric mates and constraints to restrict the degrees of freedom gradually. Well, Fusion 360 Joints flips the script on that and allows you to slowly open up degrees of freedom. But it has its limits, and one of those is the ease of kinematic assemblies. You asked for it, and here it is, Tangent Relationship. The Tangent Relationship tool gives you the ability to have two components tangent to each other when one component moves, then the other moves tangentially with it. In the Assemble panel, pick the Tangent Relationship command. Next, select a face on the first component, then a single or suite of faces on the second component. The result will be the faces of the two corresponding components will now maintain a tangent geometric relationship. Think of it as a constraint. The joints are exercised via dragging, animating, or driving joints. A node for the tangent relationship will appear at the appropriate place in the timeline, and a node under a folder called relationship will be placed in the browser below the joints folder. Just remember, if you've used contact sets in the past, you need to not use them here. That's a workflow to cancel out the tangent relationship. Currently, driven dimensions in a sketch don't create any parameters that can be referenced by other parameters, formulas, or feature parameters. Therefore, the current implementation of driven dimensions is restricted to a read-only display. Well, not anymore. Now, you can explicitly declare a dimension as driven by right-clicking on a dimension and toggling it on. But I know parameters can be sometimes a bit overwhelming, so let's look at an overly simplified version. You can add a dimension to the already fully constrained piece of sketch geometry, and Fusion will implicitly create a driven dimension. Here, you have a defined rectangle, and you want to add a sketch within that rectangle, but you want it to be driven off the rest of the rectangle. You'll see in your parameters, after selecting driven, the numbers are in parentheses and grayed out. The result of the driven dimension in both cases should be presented in the parameters table and available to use or reference like any other parameter throughout the design workspace. Last year we launched assembly concurrency, which is when you and someone else were in the same design working on different parts. It was a game changer for teams working in the product space. When you're working on a distributed design in multiple project members, there may be some times when you want to view, analyze, or experiment with the design without reserving it and blocking access for other project members. Read Only For Me lets you temporarily make the design read only for yourself, so you're free to navigate the design while other project members continue editing. With the design open, right-click the default component in the browser and select Read Only For Me. The read-only menu displays at the top of the canvas to remind you that the design is read-only. If you've already made changes to the design, read-only for me will release your reservation so that another project member can edit the design and save their changes. If you decide you want to save your changes after all, on the read-only menu, click Make Savable. If another project member doesn't reserve the design, Fusion 360 will automatically reserve it for you to continue working or save your design. There may be times when you need to replace an external component with a different component in the larger assembly. Previously, this involved removing all instances of the external component and inserting a new one for each instance you needed to replace. This was a manual, time-consuming process and often required fixing broken assembly relationships like joints and assembly contexts. The new Replace Component feature lets you quickly swap in a different external component at the same point in the timeline and carry on with your work in the assembly. If the Replace Component is a direct copy of the original, Fusion 360 will even reconnect those assembly relationships from the original component. To use it, right-click the component you want to replace in the browser, click Replace Component. In the dialog box, navigate to and select a different external design. 
Check Replace All Instances if you want to replace all identical instances of the selected component in the assembly. The existing instances of the component will be replaced with the new one you selected and you can continue working in the assembly. If you've ever tried to open a design in Fusion 360 but couldn't because it contains missing external components, this preview feature is for you. The new Resolve External Components preview lets you open assemblies with unresolved external components and attempts to resolve them. After you enable the preview, if you try to open a design with unresolved components, you'll see a notification, and then you can open it. In the browser, right-click an unresolved component, then select Resolve Component or Delete. Suppose you need to make any significant changes to a design in this state before you resolve the components. In that case, you'll need to use the Modify Compute Unresolved command first, which will compute only the features related to unresolved components in the assembly. For all you specifiers or drawings fans out there, we've got a new ThreadNote tool that automates the tedious task of notes on drawings. Launching the hole and thread note command displays the note command dialog with hole and thread note selected as the type and a prompt asking the user to select an edge. Once a hole or thread edge is selected, the edge data is extracted and formatted using built in templates. Once the leader's endpoint is specified, the formatted data is added to the note that completes the command. The command then repeats to allow another hole and thread note to be created. To use it, simply select Note in the text dropdown. You can either run with the default, which is automatic, or you can specify a hole in Thread Note. After that, it's as simple as detailing your drawings. Okay, that's it for Design and Engineering What's New for January 2022. There's a lot of awesome in this update. Subscribe and stay tuned so you don't miss the rest of the year's updates. Oh, and... Don't forget to check the links in the description for deeper dives and check out what's coming in simulation and manufacturing.